What's up? I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients resolve bloating, gas, and digestive problems so they can look and feel their best. This video today is going to be a little bit different from previous ones. In the past week, I've actually had several people reach out and send me a video from a different YouTube channel and ask my thoughts on the video. So in order to provide a proper, thoughtful response to these questions, I thought it was necessary to make this video today. To give a little background, about three weeks ago a video was posted from a different YouTube channel called EO Nutrition. The operator of this channel is a certified functional medicine practitioner and naturopathic nutritional therapist. He has a considerable number of videos on vitamin B1 which is thiamine and a specific type of thiamine called TTFD. The video that he posted a few weeks ago is called This Vitamin Protocol Fix His SIBO, Chronic Fatigue, Brain Fog, and Fibromyalgia, which is a chronic pain condition. The video is an interview between the owner of this YouTube channel, who is the practitioner, and the client that he helped. And it discusses how the young man who was being interviewed went from being extremely malnourished and underweight, which is evidenced by the photos and the thumbnail of this video, you can kind of see the before and after it's very extreme into being a healthy young man in his early 20s. I watched the video and the exact vitamin protocol that was done of the TTFD was not specifically stated like dosage or anything like that but we can safely assume that a relatively high dose of this TTFD was probably used and it was also not mentioned if there was a SIBO specific protocol that was done for this client as well. All right so I know a lot of people probably won't do this but I'm going to be completely honest with you. If I'm not an expert on a topic or if I don't know something Thing, I'll tell you. I've never used or even heard of this TTFD before, but because it seemed to help this guy's SIBO pretty significantly and he's doing way better, naturally I'm very interested to learn more about it. So I spent the last week or so searching for, researching, and reading as many scientific articles as I could find on this topic. So if this TTFD, the thiamine supplement, is working, naturally we can assume that a thiamine deficiency is probably present. Thiamine deficiency has been linked to both alcoholism and malnutrition, but it does seem like the number of people who have thiamine deficiency may be greater than just these two categories. This 2021 review by Cells Journal, it discusses thiamine deficiency. Here it shows that the minimum amount of thiamine you should get in your daily diet is just over one milligram per day, which is really easy to do through diet and supplementation. Still, a large percentage of people seem to be having a thiamine deficiency, which is very thought provoking. It went on to explain that thiamine deficiency is common in patients who are obese, have diabetes, are pregnant, have psychiatric illness, and a variety of other conditions. And it also suspects that being sick, like basically having an acute illness, various medications, eating a diet high in processed foods, and a diet high in carbohydrates can all be responsible for depleting the amount of thiamine that you have stored in your body. Essentially, you can be lacking vitamins despite having an excess of calories. Thiamine is really important because it is a necessary nutrient for a ton of body processes. One key one is the creation of a molecule called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. This is basically the energy molecules for the body. Therefore, not having enough thiamine means that we won't be able to produce energy or at least not optimally. Kind of like if you're trying to make your favorite dish, but you don't actually have the key ingredient to bake it, it's just going to turn out gross. Thiamine can also have a role in gut motility. There are a number of studies that were conducted in animals that showed that thiamine and TTFD may increase gut motility. I did look for similar studies on humans, but unfortunately was not able to find anything similar to these that was relevant to what we're talking about. Taking a step back and looking at the big picture though, the most common reason that people get SIBO is having gut motility problems. It has been well researched that the vagus nerve is important for normal gut motility. The neurotransmitter, which is a signaling molecule in the body called acetylcholine, is important for stimulating this vagus nerve. And then taking it one step further, Further, thiamine is a necessary nutrient for the production of acetylcholine. So if we kind of put all of this together, based on these scientific truths, we can make an assumption that if you are deficient in thiamine, it can negatively affect gut motility. It could be a root cause of SIBO. Now we're actually going to do the reverse here and talk about how SIBO can potentially cause low thiamine. So it can kind of be a little bit of a vicious circle. SIBO is known to be associated with malabsorption, meaning that if you have SIBO, your body may not be as good at 
at absorbing nutrients, vitamins, and just calories in general. This 2022 review by the Journal of Gastroenterology noted that the high amount of bacteria that are present when you have SIBO can actually steal the body's supply of thiamine that it gets through food and supplements. To be fair, bacteria do produce some important vitamins, nutrients, and short chain fatty acids that we do need to thrive, but obviously having way too many bacteria is not going to be good. From my personal experience, I had to eat over 3,000 calories per day just to maintain my body weight, which was about 160 pounds, or I believe that's about 73 kilograms. Now I can do this only by eating about 2,000 calories a day. So if this isn't some sort of proof that SIBO can lead to malabsorption, I don't know what is. This is definitely a very intriguing topic to explore, and additional studies are surely needed to more fully understand the existence, prevalence of the link between a thiamine deficiency and SIBO. Perhaps a study involving recently diagnosed SIBO patients, and then have them all be directly measured to see their thiamine levels. In conclusion, by no means does this video cover everything related to thiamine deficiency and SIBO, nor do I claim to be an expert on this topic. I did want to provide my full thoughts after doing my due diligence and doing some research on the topic. But with that said, if you have tried many rounds of SIBO treatment, continue to have recurrences, and are feeling stuck, it means that you probably have not identified the root cause yet. So it is possible that thiamine deficiency could be a root cause, and therefore in this case it may be helpful to look into. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I post a full length video every Monday evening and YouTube shorts throughout the week. All my content is on gut health and fitness related topics. Since you stayed till the end, check out this video here next for more information on SIBO treatments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.